We have updated awsbytes.com and added transcripts to every single episode. We don't have a massive number of episodes yet, but we're proud to have published 62 episodes so far. So it's, it's no small amount of audio to transcribe. So how did we go about doing all this work and how are we going to be able to keep doing this consistently in the future? Well, there's a simple answer, automation and AI. For the longer and more elaborate answer, you'll have to stick around until the end of this episode. We'll tell you how to build your own transcription automation pipeline and we'll also share all of the code for our solution. My name is Owen, I'm with Luciano, and this is the AWS Bytes podcast. AWS Bytes is sponsored by Four Theorem. Four Theorem is an AWS consulting partner offering training, cloud migration, and modern application architecture. Find out more at fourtheorem.com. You'll find the link in the show notes. Since this is the first episode of 2023, Happy New Year to everyone. We're glad to be back publishing new episodes after the break. So back to transcripts for this podcast. Luciano, can you start maybe by giving a quick recap of what the actual need is? What what problem are we solving? Of course. So yeah, this is a podcast. And basically in every episode, we talk a lot. We say a lot of nonsense. Sometimes we say also something interesting, at least I hope. And of course, it would be great if we could provide together with the videos and the audio files also proper transcripts. And that would be nice if we can do that consistently for every single episode. When the episode comes out, it is also available in a text format, basically. So people who prefer to read this conversation rather than just consuming the video or the audio format, they can just simply use that transcript as a way to consume the information we are trying to share. Um, Also, transcripts are very useful because they can be used for search engine optimization. We embedded them in our own website with the hope that that contributes to make our content more discoverable because on the web, we, we provide a better description for the kind of content we are producing. And in general, transcript can also help people even just watching the video, listening to the audio to easily find exactly what is the place where we were talking about a specific concept. Maybe they're listening to an episode again because there is something that they want to refresh. So maybe they they remember that we talked somewhere about step functions. They can easily search in the transcript just to exactly figure out at which point we start to talk about that particular topic. So definitely um, there is value in creating all these transcripts. But yeah, the main question is how did we do that? How can we generate transcripts in general? What did we? Yeah, this is something we've looked at a few times in the past and never found any ideal option until very recently. So some of the options are like doing it manually, hiring somebody who's professional at this. Um, The other one is grabbing the closed captions that are automatically generated by YouTube because all our episodes are already on YouTube or we can generate them in another way. So having someone do it manually, like having a professional individual, like a freelancer or a company who specializes in this is appealing because it leads to really high quality results by people who do this all the time. The disadvantage, really, the main hurdle is that it takes time to find somebody who's reliable enough and build a relationship with them and set up that whole process. It can also be expensive depending on your budget. Um, And then you have communication back and forth that can introduce a delay every time you need to publish an episode. So overall, because it adds to the lead time, it's something we were pretty reluctant to do. Um, Regarding YouTube closed captions, we could have done this pretty, I suppose, integrated this into our workflow. After we publish a new video on YouTube, we could wait for some time for YouTube to generate those closed captions and then try and integrate some code to download them, integrate them into the build process. That seems like a decent enough solution, but there's two major problems with it. Number one, the quality of the transcripts isn't that great. It lacks kind of punctuation and grammar and sentences and that sort of stuff. And additionally, the YouTube transcripts don't identify different speakers. So if you just converted it into a blog, a wall of text, it would be literally that, just a wall of kind of stream of consciousness text without any um, punctuation or identification of speakers. So the last solution left is to kind of generate the transcripts ourselves somehow. And since this is an AWS podcast, it's to be expected that we would use something like Amazon Transcribe, which is AWS's managed service to perform speech to text. So you give it an audio file and it gives you back text. And we like the simplicity of that. We're always advocating for using managed services. Um, You can use the Transcribe SDK or the API to generate the transcription in a programmatic way. with a transcribed client, you call the trans- start transcription API and provide reference to an audio file and an output prefix, and it will generate that as a, 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 a JSON file. It can also generate subtitles formats like SRT and WebVTT. Um, 
so it r runs in batch mode. It can also do real time transcriptions, but we would be using batch mode for this since it's kind of for on demand content. And you can get notified with event bridge when it's finished. Um, Luciano, do you want to talk about what the pros and cons of transcribe are and like why we ultimately ended up kind of using it, but not entirely? Yeah, of course. So transcribe is uh, quite good because uh, it gives us that feature that we really liked and we, we felt it was missing on YouTube, which is basically you get different speakers. You get a label that tells you this person is starting to talk, another person is starting to talk from this point, so we can retain in a text format that feeling that this is just not a wall of text, but it's an actual conversation between multiple people. Uh, unfortunately, um, actually, there is another one good thing that you can customize it. So you can add um, custom models and vocabularies to fine tune the results. So if you have a very specific domain, you can basically put more work into it and get more accurate results. But in general, we were not satisfied with the level of quality. It is not that bad. I think it's still quite a good tool. So you can use it for most things. But for the kind of uh, uh, scope that we had in mind, we feel that uh, good and perfect are very noticeable uh, points. Like we, we were aiming for the 90%, 99% good, while transcribed maybe is around the 97% good. And we feel that that 2% of a difference is actually quite noticeable when you are reading some text and you expect it to be higher quality. So we were looking for something that could be a little bit better. So that basically led us to explore other avenues. And uh, pretty much during the same time where we were looking for an alternative, there was a blog announcement by uh, OpenAI that introduced this new tool called Whisper which is effectively another tool to do text to speech. So to try to, to recognize text and convert it, uh, speech and convert it to text. Uh, so this came around uh, uh, last September, I think. And uh, we are going to be linking the announcement blog post in the show notes. It's the same group of people that created ChatGPT and Dali. So you probably, you probably heard of them because right now their products are all the rage. And Whisper is probably the least known of these three. But nonetheless, it's a very interesting product and we were really excited to, to try it. So we, click, we quickly spin it up and tested it and we were definitely blown away by the level of accuracy. So we immediately thought, okay, we want to use this because this is giving us the level of quality that we want to provide in the end. And if we can automate all of that process, this is going to be something that we can keep doing very easily without too much overhead in our existing process. Still, it wasn't perfect, unfortunately. There were a few small problems. One is that it did not distinguish between speakers. So on one side, we are getting more accuracy, but again, we are losing that ability to distinguish the speakers. And the other thing is that it's not built in in AWS as a managed offering. So if we were to productionize, so to speak, this solution on AWS, we'll need to figure out exactly how do we take the model and run it in AWS. So Owen, do you want to detail our solution in the end? Yeah, exactly. So we wanted to get the best of both worlds, right? So we have OpenAI Whisper, which is this fantastic uh, model that you can run. It's, it basically, they deliver it as a container that you can run and has a very nice user-friendly, developer-friendly interface where you just give it an audio file and it gives you the transcript. Might be worth mentioning that it can also do translations as well. So if you want to transcribe, but also generate Italian text or even transcribe from different languages into English, this is something it's really good at too. Um, it, we did run it uh, standalone. It comes in different sizes. So you have it, depending on your compute resources available to you, you can run the tiny model, the small model, the medium model, or the large model. But if you want to use anything and get a result within a reasonable period of time, like even less than 30 minutes, you probably need a GPU. So that's something that's worth bearing in mind with OpenAI. So our solution, what we wanted to do was use the accuracy of the OpenAI Whisper transcript, but take the speaker labels from the Amazon transcribe output output so that we'd have an accurate labeled time linked transcript and merge the results and end up with a JSON file that we could use to generate a transcript for the website with uh, sections that say, this is what Owen said, this is what Luciano said and make it readable for people almost like a blog post, right? So we built this uh, using step functions it's using SageMaker so that we can run that Whisper model with the GPU. And it's also using Lambda for lots of little transformation efforts, um, like 
if the input audio file isn't an mp3, we convert it to mp3 because transcribe, uh, it's one of the formats it supports. And sometimes we're using M4A audio and transcribe doesn't natively support that. So how do we do this? How do we even kick off this process? Well, after we finish recording an episode of AWS Bytes, we do a bit of editing, we create a video and we create an audio file. That audio file gets pushed up to Anchor, uh, which distributes the podcast to all the podcast channels. But we also take that audio now and we copy it into an S3 bucket. And that kicks off a whole automated process with this step function. We, of course, we had the previous 61 episodes or so to consider. So we also had to do a backfilling process. So we pulled down the RSS feed and kicked off this process for each um, of the 61 previous episodes by copying that audio up to S3. And interestingly, I suppose it's worth mentioning that you know, there is a cost associated with us. Probably a lot of people will be wondering what is the cost to run this because we have to run SageMaker with a GPU. We also have to use Transcribe. Both of those things can be expensive if you use them at scale. We talked about that in our previous episode on AI services. I We did work this out. I can't recall exactly, Luciana. It was around, it was definitely less than a dollar per episode for the whole process to run. So it's not um, too onerous compared to other alternatives at all, I would say. So is it worthwhile talking about some of the orchestration here? How, how does it all fit together? We mentioned we have step functions, right? So we pre-process the input if needed with FFmpeg. We trigger the two transcription jobs at the same time. So the transcribe job and the SageMaker job. Uh, transcribe means we have to use the AWS SDK within step functions and then kind of poll until it's complete. Uh, with SageMaker, we've got like a more native integration with step functions where we could just say, run this batch transform job That'll kick off a Docker container in the background with the right um, compute resources. It will pass our input audio into it. It can run a batch of jobs. The way we set it up, we generally just do one transcription at a time because we're only doing one a week. And when we get both results, then Step Functions will allow us to take both of those inputs and kick off a Lambda to process the results. So that's like essentially taking these two, both set, both systems will give you a set of segments with start times and end times. One of them has speaker labels. So we have to do this, uh, run this algorithm essentially to merge the two. What else is there to mention in this process? What other bells and whistles do we have? There are some additional things that we do to, to try to, to get a little bit higher quality with our final result. So for instance, we noticed uh, very common mistakes. For some reason, Whisper doesn't like our names. Like it was getting my name wrong a few times. It was mostly getting your name correctly, Owen, but spelled in a different way. I think there is there are just yeah, just too many ways. So it was interesting that it was getting it correctly, but just the spelling, of course. Yeah, you need to guess which which spelling is the right one. So we basically figured it out. There are also some other cases where, for instance, name of services in AWS sometimes were be consistently wrong or some small things like that. So basically we, by reviewing the first results, we created a dictionary and we uh, parse the output and apply word substitution wherever we see these common errors and we apply the correction. So all of that is somewhat automated and we can keep improving our dictionary as we find more issues like that. Um, then the other thing is that uh, uh, at the end of the day, our website is the, the place where we want to output this result in a way that is visible to people and they can consume it. So we need somehow to hook this entire project into the process that builds our website. And our website is also open source. We'll put the link in the show notes. It's a static website uh, built with Eleventy. So what we do is basically every week, every time there is a new episode, we trigger a new build and that will generate a new version of the entire website, all the HTML pages, assets and so on, and publish that online on a CDN. So what we wanted to do is somehow integrate this process to be able to hook into our website pro build process. And we thought that it would be very nice if the step function could just do a PR, just trying to send the, the generated file directly into the repository for our website. So we did all of that with an additional Lambda at the end of the process. So you might be wondering at this point, did we manage to fully automate everything? And I will say, unfortunately, not entirely yes, but I think we, we are close enough. We definitely reduced all the manual work to the bare minimum. And But what, what's left to do? What's, what we still need to do manually, or at least we want to do manually to retain a decent level of, of quality there. So 
uh, this is also the reason why we, we do a PR, because first of all, it gives us an opportunity to review the result of our transcript before it gets merged. And the other interesting thing is that uh, the PR effectively is just publishing, trying to publish a JSON file in our website repository. This JSON file is not uh, ready to go straight away because the speaker identification is just telling us something like speaker zero and speaker one is not able to tell we, which one is which depending on the voice is just distinguishing between between two different people. So we need to quickly look up who is the first person to talk and just assign the name to, to the right label. Uh, so this is something we can easily do manually directly from the GitHub UI by editing the PR. And in the process, we also quickly review. We just eyeball the entire text. And if we spot any other obvious mistake, we can easily fix it manually before merging the PR. So I think that describes uh, more or less the process and uh, what do we do in an automated fashion and what we still do manually. What else do we want to share? Yeah, I think just to summarize, I think this has really been a, a, a step forward in the transcription technology. And I'm really happy with the level of automation we now have. I think it's just the right balance between manual effort and autom automation. It's great that you can now use AI and be really confident that you've got a result that people can read without finding it kind of jarring or distracting to read. Um, some of the things that it, it really surprised me with OpenAI Whisper is how you mentioned like product names and AWS service names. It seems to just know what they are and get them right most of the time. Some of the things where it's less accurate is just things that are hard to predict. Like AWS Bytes isn't exactly a top international brand yet. So sometimes it would spell it, spell it with B-Y-T-E-S instead of B-I-T-E-S. So there are some things where you'll always have to do those vocabulary substitutions you mentioned. But overall, I think this is just mostly hands off and you end up with a really good result uh, for very little cost. So if this is something you want to do for your own podcast, the good news is that everything we just told you about is open source. So you can find our repo on GitHub. It's called Pod Whisperer in as a tribute to OpenAI Whisper uh, because this is primarily aimed at podcasts. But of course, you could use this for transcribing meetings or any other kind of audio you could think of. Um, you can follow the instructions in the readme and deploy this into your own AWS account. So feel free to contribute back to the project if you think there's something missing, improvements you'd like to make, something you'd like to change. And we'd really love to hear from you and we gratefully appreciate the chance to grow this uh, and spread it around even further. This is all we have for this episode. We hope you liked it and we look forward to hearing your feedback on our transcripts. By the way, if you happen to find a mistake in one of our transcripts, you can easily submit a PR. Like Luciano said, the link will be in the show notes to the AWS Bytes static website repo. Um, it would help us fix the issue and improve the quality of what we're doing. It's really nice to have everybody contributing to the podcast. Uh, we're really enjoying that so far. So thank you, and we'll see you in the next episode.